David Harper of Bionic Turtle yesterday, I tried to explain the intuition behind the Black Shoals Merton option pricing model. Today I'd like to apply it to price a European call option on a stock. In order to do that, I need five or six inputs. Here are the assumptions I'm going to use. By the way, this spreadsheet, if you'd like to download it and take a closer look yourself, is available at bionicturtle.com. So in order to use the Black Shoals Merton, I need either five or six inputs. That's the yellow shaded region. I'm going to, for this exercise here, assume the stock pays no dividend. So it's a European call option on a non-dividend paying stock. So the dividend yield set to zero. It's really a minor adjustment to tweak the Black Shoals to account for dividends. But I'll just leave it off for now. The original Black Shoals in 1973 didn't really assume dividends, it was subsequently adjusted. My inputs are going to be the following. A stock price of $10, a strike or exercise price also of $10, a volatility or annualized standard deviation of 30%. I need an assumption about the riskless or risk-free rate. I'll assume 4%. And I need a contractual term in this case denoted by years so one means that option expires in one year just like the volatility is annualized this option this contractual term for the option is expressed in number of years so that's the five inputs that I need in order to apply the Black Shoals Merton in yellow here at the bottom I've reproduced the formula for a European call option. We know it's European style because the C is small c instead of capital C. If it were a capital C, that would denote American style call option, which can be exercised prior to expiration. This is the formula for a European style call option, which can only be exercised at expiration. And also, this is the formula for, again, a non-dividend paying stock. I know that because the stock price is not reduced by the dividend yield. Let's just note a couple things about this formula for the European call option. All of our inputs are in the formula here. The only one we can't see immediately is volatility, but see we've got the stock price, the strike price, the volatility is embedded here in this D1 and D2 and here's the riskless rate and the term. So the only tricky part really about this are these two functions here which are standard normal cumulative distribution functions of respectively D1 and D2. Here's D1 and D2. There is some intuition behind them but I'm going to save that for now and you notice I've just calculated already in the spreadsheet here the formula for D1. Here it is. This formula just implements this right here, the formula for D1, and the formula for D2 is a function of D1. So I'm calculating those. Those are reflected here by the blue formula. I have D1 and D2. This N function is, again, the standard normal cumulative distribution function. In Excel, we use norm S dist right here. And it only takes a single parameter. What it gives us is, if you think about a normal curve, it gives us the percentage of the area under the curve to the left of the value that we provide. So norm S dist of zero means that how much, if we take a standard bell curve, how much of the area under the curve is to the left of zero, which is the mean, that's going to be 50%. And so norm S dist of The D1 that we calculate in this case is going to be 0.28. That's going to be the area under the curve to the left of 0.28 standard deviations. It's going to be a little bit more than 50% or 61%. So knowing that, we can now actually calculate the full formula. So I'm going to go to this cell here for the call option, and then I'm just going to enter in the formula here for the Black Shoals Merton. So I start with equals. I need the stock price. I want to multiply that by 
the standard normal cumulative distribution function, which again is norm s dist, that s means nor, uh, normal, or standard, and then I give it the d1 parameter here, and then I subtract, now I'm into this side, the strike price, multiplied by this piece here, which is the exponential function of negative rate times time, if you've looked at any of my tutorials before, you know that this all this does is discount the strike price on a continuously compounded basis. So this right here is just the present value of the strike price discounted on a continuous basis. So if I go back up here, I'll multiply by exponential function of negative my rate multiplied by my term close parens, and then I just need this final standard normal cumulative distribution function. This time of the D2, close parens, and I get $1.38 is the value of the European style call option on this stock currently priced at 10 with a strike of 10 and expiration in one year where the stock has volatility of 30% and the riskless rate is 4%. Just to test this out, or we might imagine, what if we shortened the term to say three months, 0.25, the value of that call option goes down. I'll put that back and then finally, if I wanna do the put, I don't have the formula showing here, but it's just a little bit of a reversal. I start with the discounted exercise price first and I say the strike price multiplied by the again the discounting of that so the exponential function of negative the rate times the term and then I'm gonna multiply that by norm s dist the only and in the, I wanna use d2 here because I've switched these around the only thing is I want to, in this case for the put, I want to use a negative D2. That's the tweak. Then I'm going to subtract. Now I'm at this, now I'm here at this part. I'm going to subtract the stock price multiplied by norm S dist. And instead of D1, I'm going to just make it a negative D1. That's the difference for the put. Close parens. And I get 98 cents. And so that's again the value of the European style put option with the same uh, other variable inputs. So that's about it for the Black Scholes Merton. Uh, you can get the spreadsheet at bionicturtle.com. This is David Harper. Thanks for your time.